हेलो एवरीवन सो होप आई एम ऑडिबल तो आवर टुडे टॉपिक इज द एस बॉम वे द आर्ट ऑफ कंज्यूमिंग एंड रिचिंग मैनेजिंग इनबाउंड एस बॉम फॉर ऑटोमेटेड कंप्लायंस कंटिन्यूस कंप्लायंस ओके सो मी अनुपम एंड माय कोलीग अरुण विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग दिस टॉपिक सो अबाउट आवर आवर सेल्फ myself anupam ghosh from siemens technology india working as a technology professional i also co-lead the sw360 project yeah i'm arun i am kind of leading the compliance activities at siemens healthineers so responsible for the tools and compliance processes at uh, healthineers so uh, i lead a team of a uh, few of the compliance experts we do the file level license clearing and all the other related activities at siemens healthineers so today i would be showing about a new feature that we have brought in software 360 and uh, possibly a live demo of uh, that feature so what's the actual challenge that we face face in a company when we have a compliance workflow so we need to identify the wss component we need to register the component review assessment then verification and then documentation so with all this uh, module uh, probably start with the build automation on the pipeline where you would like to generate uh, using some sca tool you would like to generate a sbom and then uh, from that sbom try to register your component or the project in a tool for the registration purpose but during this process you need to enrich the sbom or enhance the sbom because the sbom may be missing some information or maybe it has lot of information in it so you need to enrich the sbom and then put it into a uh, for registering your project uh, for here is the tool sw360 that we are focusing on and yeah you know, so then you can exchange the information with sw316 different sbom using different sbom importer like cyclone dx spdx now once you have the component then also you need to review an assessment review an assessment so for review an assessment uh fosology is the tool that will be looking into so usually in siemens we do a file level clearing so for that uh, fosology supports with license copyright here also we have the exchanging information using spdx and copy uh, uh, cyclone dx as bom now engineering team mostly look into verification and documentations of the product so all these phases that we see that we need to exchange some form of as bom we need to enrich the as bom we need to uh, exchange messages over uh, using as bom so for today's presentation we'll be mostly focusing on the registration and review and assessment part that's mo mostly with the two tools sw360 and fosology and we'll try to see how this uh, tools can be used for some of the automations uh, we are trying it out so about the introduction of the project sw360 sw360 is a eclipse foundation project uh, it became open source in 2018 SW360 is basically a open source component hub where you can keep track all your open source libraries so the tech stack of SW360 is mostly using life reportal uh we are in a development uh, phase for replacing the life reportal with SW360 front end which is react react based ui that we are doing and uh, it's on active development and the backend side we use java uh, for message exchange script spring boot for rest and uh, rest and couchdb as a database you can interact using in sw360 using the web interface or uh, over the rest api so what's this project is all about as i as uh, said that sw360 is a third party component catalog assign third party components to product and project here the alphabets uh, you can say component with releases so basically it's the release 
uh, or the libraries that or dependencies that you found inside your uh, project. Uh, project and product almost similar terms that we use in SW360. So these are all dependencies that are related to your product or project and yeah with the benefits that we get here you can link you can reuse this information of the component. Uh, you can uh, we need to find also the product documentation also support the clearing infrastructure for these components that we have in SW360. So let's go through the use cases that we have, uh, what, why we need a tool like SW360. So SW360 is a component inventory database. It's all about component management. So here uh, at the component level, you can also collect licensing information and store it into SW360. SW360 is, uh, you can mark the, you can take uh, open source component but along with open source you can also take internal component commercial and freewares you can choose different type uh, as the name goes it's software 360 software 360 should give you a 360 degree view of your product or project so along with license information for the OSS component we also support ecc vulnerability some statistics, code analysis, and a dashboard as well. So to to monitor your component release and project and the usage. SBOM management. SBOM management is uh, the main topic for today. And SW360 is designed to manage the SBOM, where you can find the relations between the project and the components. Uh, it also captures means whatever the component and project you are using in your organization. So when you have project and component, it's always need you have to you, you need some reporting form a reporting structure to extract the report whatever uh, analysis you are doing in the tool. So here we have uh, support for SW uh, in SW360 we have SPDX and Cyclone DX to exchange information for uh, to get information for the license copyright acknowledgement you can also uh, track the project uh, readme oss that includes your license information copyright information and other findings so with these main use cases uh, we try to build what kind of data model we can have for sw360 where we can minimize the duplication uh, duplication of component entries. We can also have uh, separate uh, separate vendor and version from the component catalog. So uh, for the component name, so that we can track them more appropriately. With this, uh, the structure that we have now, data model we have now, the release is the main entity into SW360. So release can be connected to projects. It can be multiple releases of uh, in a in a group it forms a component and vendor can be uh, linked to releases so there is another module that's package portlet it's new introduced into sw360 arun is going to talk about it more detail we also need to support external systems where you can uh, configure cps in sw360 and track your vulnerabilities so to support all these we need a clear data model to enhance the search and the filtering functionality into a tool. So how all this works? So first you need to create a component that's the basic container where you can keep your releases or track your releases. Release is basically the version of that component. And then you add packages to the release. So uh, earlier we don't have the package portlet so it's if you if you want to use multiple packages then it ha you have to maintain it in a release structure but with the package portlet it will be easier um, so now once you have the components you can also create the project entry so project to track uh, your project and uh, um, usage and then create a bill of material out of the project and link those 
releases or the dependencies that you have in your software to the project. Now, once you link the releases to your project, you also need to clear those dependencies. It's okay. Yeah, so it's all good that you have everything together. Now, how do you scan those? How do you, how do you go for the clearing? So the solution that we use in automation with SW360 is Fossology. So a brief introduction of Fossology. Uh, Fossology is a Linux Foundation project. So Fossology is an open source project under DP, GPL, GPL 2.0 license from 2008 and it's uh, become a Linux Foundation project in 2015. It's a placeholder for multiple OSS license, OSS scanner. Um, it it's gives you the wave interface as well as a CLI uh, REST endpoint to communicate with Fossology. Uh, you can scan, uh, it has multiple scan agents uh, that can scan your copyright licenses, ECC, uh, uh, keywords, and can be used for multiple other purpose because it used mostly regex based scanner for the copyright and keywords. So it's a multi-user, multi-tenant web UI for review organizing, clearing jobs. So there are multiple uh, organizations those were using Fossology. They put their logo here. So yeah, if you are using, you are interested, you can also send us your logo to put it here. So I'll just, go through the automation workflow that we have with Fossology currently with SW360. So SW360, uh, though the entity here I've given as a human, but it can be a CA tool that automatically can push data to SW360. Then SW360 uploads the dependency or the releases that you have in your pro project to Fossology server. Now Fossology runs its scanners to more uh, to finding license copyright and other details from your library, uh, then it goes for a review. So in Fossology, review is mostly, mostly manual so that you can, uh, there is an automation around 10 to 15% uh, that works, but not more than that. So yeah, it's mostly manual. Uh, once you have the finding, then uh, clearing user, go through the findings, clear the package and then create a report and upload it back to SW360. So to bring more automation to this space, we are also working uh, with something which we call it license compatibility agent. That will help you to uh, check the license compatibility in Fossology. Uh, once the license compatibility agent check the compatibility of the licenses, then decider agent helps you to identify those license, those are compatible and then clearing result is automatically generated and uploaded to SW360. So here the benefit that you will get, uh, you don't need to manually do things, most of the things, but everything cannot be automated. So most of the things will be auto, can be or can be identified automatically, but some portion that requires identification, you will be able, able to clearly identify that from SW360. So with that, I'll hand over to Arun for yes, bon approaches. Yeah, I'll start with uh, you know the core requirement why we need to process S bombs in Software 360 and what is it all about the new approach. So to uh, explain that, I would want to define the you know certain uh, terminologies like we you have been hearing it component component release package so this is strictly based on our business context and it is not an industry standard term package would mean different in different contexts but in the siemens world in our business context this is how we uh, define these three elements so in software 360 component would be the topmost element which is mostly mapped to a, a source code repository and the component release would be mapped to the corresponding releases or uh, you know how they have defined their release management via tags so uh, those are the component release and those are the artifacts which are linked to a particular project so the usage happens at that level so the new scenario comes in where with all of these uh, automation coming in and the sbom requirement and the majority use case of compliance comes from the way uh, open source is consumed. 
So most of us know that we consume open source in the you know, binary non-modified form through different package managers. So that brings in a challenge and a conflict with our existing uh, clearing process, which demands uh, source file level clearing. So uh, there is a, a disparity between what the developers see and use and what the compliance team wants to clear. So this was a challenge in uh, the existing or the earlier versions of Software 360, where we were forced to register a package, say for example, a, a binary package also as a component. So then that becomes a lot of redundant information and it uh, led us into a lot of uh, clearing volume, additional clearing volume. So in order to solve that, uh, we have come up with the package portlet, which is in addition to components in Software 360. So this was why if we take an example of Angular, like what I have highlighted here is uh, the Angular organization and the Angular repository. So in our terminology, Angular would be the component and uh, it's release management based. Uh, this would be the release. And the same form in the NPM registry, it would appear as a, a package where it establishes a relationship with the repository. So this is how we find the relationship between the binary package and its uh, source uh, component. So in the current data model, as I explained, we have to link uh, component releases at uh, project level. But invisibly, there is also a corresponding component, uh, you know, linked to each releases. So in the new data model, what would differ is apart from the component releases and component, we have this uh, new additions of packages. So to explain a little more detail into the component relationship, to take an example, say we go for a Nugget component, uh, Microsoft application insights. So there, I think from 2019, Nuggets, uh, started to include this information source repository as a mandatory field while releasing packages. So since then, uh, it is mandatory to mention the GitHub repository or, or any source repository uh, where you are maintaining the code. So uh, this means uh, this is the view. The binary view is what the developers use and they download the NUPKG package and that is how they ingest into the code but uh, the compliance team would need the source code to review at a file level. So we wanted to reduce our workload and also speed up the development process. Say for example, in this uh, use case, uh, app, app Insight SDK contains 31 packages and all those 31 packages are referring to a single source repository. So in the old model, we were required to create 31 clearing request against one clearing request in, in, in source repo. So even though we knew it, uh, there were a lot of workarounds done by teams to manage this offline, but it all led into additional manual task and it become, became cumbersome when, you know, the number of packages started getting increasing. So it was difficult to manage. And hence we launched the package portlet. So uh, I'll also explain it in the demo a little bit, but uh, let's go through the screenshots right now. So here uh, in the database, you will get a collection of all the packages ingested uh, during various times for during uh, various projects. And uh, you can differentiate it based on the package manager and search, uh, in, in, you know, according to your needs. So uh, even though you have, we have manual capabilities here, we prefer that uh, the creation of packages and management always happens via automation. And we have enabled it, it through uh, the process of Cyclone DX importer, which I would uh, show in a minute. So from the UI, there are two uh, times like where we can, two use cases where we want to import an SBOM into a project. So uh, at a project level, we can import an SBOM when we do this for a first time. And uh, it is just basic drag and drop any JSON or um, XML file, and it would import the entire SBOM and model the project in its granular form. And uh, you know, it gives us also a feedback in terms of uh, what is missing and what is available. For example, the minimum requirement to create a package is the presence of a package URL. And to link a component release to that corresponding package, uh, we need a VCS URL present in it. So that is where uh, the SBOM enrichment 
Anupam talked about earlier comes into picture because most of the tools uh, we use a lot of Cyclone DX uh, tools uh, for the SEA part and depending on the technology we the results vary some might give uh, the VCS URL some might not so we have to implement uh, certain steps to enrich the bomb so that you know uh, the information is collected at the right point and we can model the project at the first go itself so uh, the more quality that you bring in the s bomb or the more enriched s bomb that you bring in to import more perfect your project modeling would be so from a project point of view uh, we have this uh, new tab where this linked packages are available where you would see the vendor package name and also the release link to it if a VCS is present and um, if a VCS is not available it would not restrict the creation of a package but it would create it and would say that okay it's a orphan package so we can still use it for maybe security monitoring if your workflow uh, you want to define your workflow and limit it to that level but in our use case we have to go one step ahead and do the source level clearing so hence we want uh, a release to be linked to a package and uh, the license information uh, in this view is also coming from the uh, cyclone dx s bomb and uh, based on the package manager type it would display in in in, in the ui so uh, similar way like um, the existence of a package is independent of a project so as as i told like it would be there and in your project you would only have the exact packages that are used for your particular project say suppose if uh, application insights currently shows uh, two linked packages in in one of your project you might not use both of them but only just one but then your modeling would reflect exactly that way even though at the release level uh, you will have the complete collection but at the project level uh, you will have only the required one which has been identified by the SEA tool and is part of the SBOM that you imported. And if you go one step ahead, like uh, this is the package details, like we are not collecting or there is no attachment at this level. We don't intend to attach any files as we do for releases at this level, but just a basic summary change log. And in future, we would also extend to track vulnerabilities here. So, apart from the basic information like the package uh, URL and you see the version control system. So because of the presence of the version control system, uh, we identify the linked release based on that. And uh, in, I, we can consider this, this kind of a good quality S bomb where this information is available and uh, this goes uh, very smoothly. I mean, this is a screenshot from a, a typical S bomb and how we uh, capture certain details and map it to uh, software 360. So uh, the external references are, you know, mostly for uh, NuGet components, we do get it in, th in the first shot, but uh, certain other technologies we might not. And we have to uh, really put some glue code where we can find that information. So I think it is time for the demo. I will just... Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I've just set this up for uh, this demo purpose, so there is no uh, data in it. So from the project view, I am going to import an S bomb. So we also have uh, the uh, facility to import SPDX, but that is not in the current scope. Uh, but Software 360 at the community level does have that functionality and it supports it. So. Here I'm going to use, uh, first I'll use uh, XML based as bomb and I do the upload. Okay. <laughs> Usually it doesn't take this much time, but every, I mean, every demo this happens, you know. Maybe I can blame on the network speed, but yeah. 
and the funny part is like we do capture the time for import also in the results so that's embarrassing right now <laughs> I'll wait for a few more seconds and then see if I can do another one. So this, um, what I'm showing is right through the UI, but uh, we also have the entire uh, uh, package portlet in uh, the REST API supported. So you can actually uh, configure it in your pipeline to uh, do this. Oh, this is bad. Oh, okay. So it's a. It seems that <laughs> it is available here. I don't know the why it is not showing the status or it is hanging. So uh, it has created the project, and you can see the corresponding components that are created. And if we check the project, uh, we can see the linked. Okay. The demo is kind of bombing it a different level, but yeah, uh, this is how it would, uh, uh, you know, uh, configure. Maybe I'm not going to, yeah. So it took this much of time and there is like around 1300 packages and uh, existing packages were reused somewhere created and uh, this is the information that it gives saying that out of this 1300, 382 did not have VCS information. So this is kind of an information to the developer uh, that says that, okay, you need to enhance or enrich your SBOM. So uh, this information even is available like uh, at the project level, once this input is done, It, is, it, it should be available at the attachment uh, uh, folder. I mean, I will, I'll do one more with a different one, which I'm like, okay, so it's like NPM and it should be fast. Don't fail me here. I mean, this is like, it should happen in one or two seconds, ideally. So meanwhile, like uh, this is the you know advantage that we get uh, by redu reduction of you know when, what I meant is the clearing effort. So for example, all of these components of different versions uh, are grouped to a, a certain version of a component. So uh, the current it is 352 entries, and the releases would be correspondingly small to create it. Hmm? I think it, it's the speed and network speed. I'm not, not sure. Yeah, luckily it. Yes. So after the import, the um, SBOM is already automatically attached into the project. And also the status of the import is again attached as a JSON file, which we can view at a later point. So in this case, uh, there were no reuse. So all are new new packages, and I think most of it doesn't contain VCS information. So uh, all of the linked packages are kind of you know requires enrichment to identify it. But at this point, like uh, the advantage is that you have the granular view available, like what your developer is using. So the developer can come to this. Software 360 and see that yes, I am using this thing, and uh, they can monitor it against uh, you know vulnerability statuses uh, in in whatever tool you have connected to Software 360. And the license clearing uh, at this page, we would have the linked releases, which would be much smaller number compared to the you know 1,300 packages. So once it is uh, done as per our workflow, like we can uh, you know just create a clearing request to the clearing office and. Uh, uh, that's how the, the workflow goes and it's a 
it's tracked and then uh, all of these components would change the uh, status to a green state where we say that okay uh, it's all approved and then uh, if there are obligations based on the licenses found that would appear here in the obligations tab where the project can review these obligations and uh, perform the remediation accordingly and when it comes to vulnerability tracking status if you have enabled uh, vulnerability monitoring so currently we are uh, we have linked an internal tool from Siemens to uh, do this vulnerability so it does a nightly sync to that uh, vulnerability application and gets all the information back to uh, this project level so uh, it's a uh, you know real time tracking happening and a daily sync based on this so uh, the project can take decisions based on the uh, vulnerabilities that are reported so that's all from the demo for now so our whole intention of coming up with these features is to you know we want to really help the developers to you know move from this position because in terms of compliance everybody feels every engineer feels like this and we want to help them to get from this position to somewhere here where they are so comfortable i mean that is our, our goal so i think we are at the end of our presentation and these are our links to our projects visit the project at github consider giving it a star and if you have any queries please write to our email list or you know contact us and we do have a community call for software 360 every wednesday at around i think 10 a.m european time yeah so you are welcome to join and raise your concerns or any new feature request and you know welcome to contribute questions so if you have any questions So, uh, have you discovered any severe license uh, contradictions or obligations as a result of this? And also, who, who would it be within Siemens that acts on the information? Is it the engineering team or is it the legal department? The you know, like a, an, uh, I don't know if you have an OSPO or a open source program office. Okay, so the question is like, um, who would act on the findings? Yeah, and if, if you have found any, you know, major yeah, yeah, license yeah. uh, conflicts. Yes. So, um, in, in, as Anupam mentioned earlier, we use Phosology, and uh, we have the facility to uh, capture the legal obligations in Phosology. So we get that feed from the legal from time to time when they update the uh, license obligation database. And that is embedded in Phosology. So the clearing report that we generate out of Phosology would contain that legal uh, obligations which are provided to us by the legal. And that would appear in the obligations tab I uh, showed in the UI. So the project and uh, for each business unit uh, at Siemens, we have a uh, you know third party software manager who is responsible for the coordination between the project. And he acts as kind of a license between the project and the compliance team. So then they sit together, discuss the next steps. And only if some cases comes out beyond the existing uh, recommended obligations or terms, then a legal would be involved. So most of the time when a new license comes up, which is not there in the database, uh, we get uh, help from legal to uh, do an interpretation. Or if it is a very business specific case, we do get that, yeah. I mean, you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, I wonder why you're actually looking into this package or from into the sources of packages provided by package managers. So I totally get if you have your own sources, but why are you scanning the sources of public uh, packages where usually the package manager has all the license information present? Uh, partially right, yes, for certain package managers, when they provide the package, we do have a complete license, but certain uh, package managers strip off 
certain comments and license header files when they make the package. So the legal at Siemens says or our procedure demands that we use a file level source uh, based clearing. Yes. I mean, sometimes we also feel that it's a overkill, but process <laughs> legal. So we cannot say no on that. To follow up on that, it's fairly common for packages to not have correct or complete license information. I've seen packages where the license field is actually a user guide or a pretty picture, which is not helpful. But a question, uh, you said large scale automated scanning and you're showing a manual upload. So where is the large scale automated clearing going on? Sorry? Where is the large scale automated clearing going on? You show manual upload and manual request of clearing. Where mm -hmm. is the automation? Yeah, um, so um, as I explained, once the clearing request is available uh, from a project, we have an internal automation uh, which uh, we run a pipeline and we send it to the Fasology tool. So the source code is uploaded automatically to Fasology and all the agents which are configured are run automatically. And there are two reports or reports that can be generated at two stages. Once we can take the raw report like what the scanner has found and the other one is where an expert has concluded those licenses. So if it is a, uh, a big project, the project also get the opportunity to start looking into the raw findings like how the compliance team is seeing it like they can see the exact license and it, it will show the exact files where this license is applied say for example in the the main license would be MIT the other licenses they might find a GPL 2.0 license but they can investigate further thing and they find it to be in a docs folder so that means it, it is not going to affect in any way so similarly uh, yeah yeah, I just have the question. So I guess you will not share the license compatibility metrics that you use at Siemens, I guess, so because we would not share it. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you potentially know we also have this evaluator in the OSS review toolkit where, where we had at least, well, uh, a common, yeah, also a rule engine more or less. Yeah. Um, do you already think about or could we start then collaborating on this because I guess we could reuse it in Fosology the same way, so kind of modular approach, I would really appreciate that. Because then we could say, okay, we take the same license classification set, the, cl license policy, the policy set that we use in ORT, we could also use it in, here in, in your approach, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, you want yeah. to answer? Absolutely, we can collaborate here. Yeah. So we, we can connect after the talk and... I think, I think we, we had uh, tried integrating ORT, you know, some few years back and then I think no. it was the time of antenna, right? It, it, it works. What the, with what the SW360 integration works. So if you have a what the analysis report, then you can upload to SW360 to create the dependency tree and the project. That yeah, and uh, specific to the license policy, like there is also an upcoming feature that we have. Uh, it's in the concept stage, like uh, a license policy manager, which we would add to Software 360. So based on the results, uh, it would make the uh, make it easy for the engineering team to uh, make decisions like uh, we would do all the intelligent work like if it is a permissive license then there is no further action required and we would just group uh, those source packages which contain the problematic licenses and say uh, you have 100 components so 95 components are fine please look into these five components and then they can focus on uh, how it is being used whether there's a modification or it is just a binary non-modified usage and they can fulfill the obligations in that way. So this is also in the works and then we should also talk about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have so any problem. And I can try to speak up. Yeah. So then you showed us that Yeah. Thank you. So you showed that you have um, packages that come from the same repository, but you um, separate them on the package level. So do you then do individual clearance for all these packages and differ in their uh, concluded license? Or do you do the clearance on the repository behind it and uh, in most cases then maybe over report on these packages if you take the the repository license for the underlying packages. So I know in NuGet, a lot of examples where you have a repository that is, for example, under an Apache license, 
but there is, I don't know, 400 packages that come from that repository and for many of them, maybe it's an MIT license would be the concluded license correctly. So do you differentiate in that? Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, at at uh, Siemens, at the package level, we do not, uh, I mean, right now we are forced to do the clearing at package level, which has, you know, taken our workload uh, a lot. So this package model modeling would enable us to reduce that with this grouping and still uh, provide this granular view to both the teams, like for the engineers and all the, so the compliance team. And uh, why we do it at the source repository level is, uh, because most of the packages, uh, the concluded license is taken as from the main license part. So the other included files are not often seen. So we just check for um, if there is any uh, incompatible. So that is where the incompatibility agent would also work, which says that, okay, the main license is Apache and you have few files under GPL2. And uh, that is when the engineering would decide like if they are modifying the package or are they using the package in the source form. They are, if they are creating the binary, then they need to remove it. So those decisions would be based on the source file, source level clearing report. So that is why we uh, do at the each release level. And for package, we go with uh, the main license, which, which is already most of the time available from the uh, SCA tool SBOM result. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? No questions. Okay, so then thanks for attending. Thank you.